Woo, Woo. that's good. Oh, <laughs> it's good to have peace like a river in my uh -huh. soul. This is the middle of May. And with that, we are still in this month of power. Mm -hmm. And Maggie and I have been discussing and discussing. And what we're realizing is we're at a place where we're discussing what is mine to do. Mm -hmm. And so that's our topic today. And it, it causes some challenges because we need to evaluate how do we know? Right. How do we know what's next? Right. And we were talking about this in the spirit and in, in the um, context of COVID-19. Of course, knowing what ours to do is always something that is of challenge because we're busy people. But in COVID-19, wherever you're watching, your state is in some state of reopening. And it may or may not feel right to you, but what is sure is that we have the faculty, our own power, our guiding divinity to tell us what is right for us? What next? Do we wear a mask? Do we not wear a mask? Do we wear gloves? Do we not wear gloves? Do we go in public? Do we not go in public? And so we're going to look at and explore a little bit more about how to go within and use our divine faculties to determine what is ours to do. And a lot of people have been asking, well, when are we going to come to church? When are we going to meet together right here in this sanctuary? Mm -hmm. Well, there's not enough information. There's new cases happening here in our area, and we're going to wait, and we certainly won't open up in May. But we'll reevaluate in a couple weeks and just see how things are going, mm -hmm. and then we'll go, because we want us to be safe when we do congregate. Thank goodness we've got our live stream. Yes. So when we talk about what is ours to do, right away I brought up with Rev. Gary that I love the scripture found in John 11 verses 5 through 8. This is around Jesus demonstrating for us how not to get pulled off center. You ever heard of the, you know, poor planning on your part doesn't constitute an emergency on mine. So in this passage, it says, accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed for two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after, after this, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you're going there again? So breaking this down, Jesus was in the middle of his ministry. He was doing what he does. He was preaching, he was teaching, and he was healing. But Lazarus was his beloved, his best friend, as close to a brother as Thomas was himself. And you would think that getting a message that says, hey, Jesus, Lazarus is sick and he's going to die, would have alerted him to round up his posse and make the trip to Judea. It was just 20 miles off, which would have been about one day. But look what it says. He stayed two days longer in the place where he was. And in my study of this scripture, I know that he ate, and I know that he slept, and I certainly know that he prayed. He was doing what was his to do in that moment. And though there was this urgent distraction over here, he was confident that Lazarus was doing what he needed to do as well. And when the time was right, and he was clear in his next action, he rounded up to his disciples with confidence and ease and grace and faith and made that next step. So I just love this scripture as a reminder that we need not be pulled off our center, need not be pulled away from doing a task at hand that we know is ours and no one else's. 
So what do you think, Gary, about how Jesus shows this for us? I love this as an example of how we can use this for our own life right now. Because I'm, I go out and I see some people are acting like nothing's, <laughs> there is no COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I, and then there's other businesses that are taking very safe practices. And I, I know for myself, I, I'm exampling, I choose what is mine to do now. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what others are doing, I need to navigate through this, what's right for me? And if, if I have guidance or clarity that it's not mine to do, or it is mine to do, I can use this as a template for how to act in my life. Right. I love that. Yes. We have another quote. This is R William Earl Cameron. He was a Unity minister, wrote several books, and wrote many articles for Unity magazine. If we are indeed the spiritual image and likeness of God, then it is our privilege, our responsibility, and our destiny to put the infinite nature and powers of God to work in our lives. Mm -hmm. I love how unity puts it right there. If we're created in the image and likeness of God, and we know this is true because we affirm always that there is only one presence and one power. Well, if there's only one presence and one power, then where are we? We're right within that. Mm -hmm. And if we take that, what an honor, what a privilege it is that our innate inheritance is that divine template within us. And when we operate from that place, then when we ask the question, what is mine to do, we can ask it from this depth of knowing, which is not what our minds are saying. It's what our hearts know mm -hmm. as truth. Yeah. And it's a good way to proceed. It is. I really love the word responsibility that jumps out here. And, and because we're talking about this, what is mine to do in the context of a global pandemic wow. and the next phases of reopening, we have a responsibility to utilize all of those um, tools within our spiritual tool belt. Once we are aware and awakened to the idea, the truth that we are all divine beings with that same essence, the Christ essence, that God essence within each of us, it is our responsibility to not go back to sleep. So let's look at what Eckhart Tolle says. I love this quote where he says that whenever you become anxious or stressed, outer purpose has taken over and you've lost sight of your inner purpose. You have forgotten that your state of consciousness is primary. All else is secondary. So it is saying here, my consciousness, my existence, my being with the awareness of that same responsibility of our own consciousness is my business. And it's my work to do to remain clear in my prayer practice, in my meditation practice, in doing all of those right things that keep me in connection and grounded. Because when I'm feeling anxious or stressed, I know that something, a message from yonder, has tried to pull me off center. So especially at a time like this where there's a lot of information bombarding us, we really need to take that time, that self-care to discern clearly what we are doing, why we're doing it, and what we are to do next. So we can move through that with confidence. I love that, Mangi. And what I'm beginning to see is that 
that worry, that fear, that doubt, that, that anxious or stress that comes forward is the greatest blessing mm -hmm. because it's opened us to recognize there's something that needs to be done. Maybe it's a forgiveness. Maybe it's a let go and let God. Something, but without that anxious, that anxiety or that, that fear, that worry for coming up, I would not have the awareness that something needs to happen. And if we take that attitude, that anything comes up that's causing us chaos or stress, is just alerting us to something that we need to respond to, mm -hmm. which holds us that our state of consciousness is all that we need to do. And then everything else is secondary. First practice is to attend to what is true. And if we're afraid or we're worried or we're full of joy and love and bliss, whatever it is, let's attend to what is. Thank you, worry. <laughs> Thank you, anger. Thank you, fear. Thank you for waking me up to this moment. And, oh, I love Catherine Ponder. And she's a unity minister that continues to do her great work in the yes. universe. Oh, she's wonderful. Always, when you, when you have a problem, if you will ask for divine ideas to discern between the true and the faults in the situation, you will be guided to a solution. So here we are in the blessing of a worry or a panic or a fear. If we don't have a solution, all we need to do is ask mm -hmm. divine ideas. God, give me some clarity. Give me some ideas that I can discern what's a true way of approach. What's not the best way to approach this situation? We can balance by always asking God for guidance. And God's always present to give us those ideas towards discernment. Mm -hmm. And I love what she says about asking for the divine idea. I have learned that we are a divine idea. So when we align ourselves into the frequency of truth, truth for universal truth in the universe, which is God is principle, then we become just a conduit of information. And so it's so important to do that in our work, to find time to commune with God. That might look like a walk. It might look like baking bread. It might look like painting or writing or sitting still. In meditation. I'm, I'm active, so I claim active meditation all the time, but it's really in the process of attuning for that download. And when we ask, then we will inevitably be shown the way. And this reminds me of Reverend Ellen Debenport. In her book, Hell in the Hallway, Light at the Door, she talks about um, the prayers that we can declare when looking for our next right thing, when we're asking ourselves, what is mine to do? And in combination of that book and then a sermon she gave at Unity of Wimberley, it is asking, show me in a way that I cannot ignore and speak to me in a way that I understand. Show me in a way that I cannot ignore, speak to me in a way that I understand. And then the trick becomes waiting in that space, knowing the answer will be revealed in divine timing. And when it shows up, it's going to show up in a way that you cannot ignore and you perfectly understand. And if you step outside of that, then, I mean, I get myself sick. I get a stomach ache or a headache. But when it shows up for, in this way, I know clearly what is mine to do, what is true and right for me. 
And we look at um, Sister Nicole Turan. She's a Catholic nun. And this wonderful quote says exactly this. Regardless of what the next right thing is, it is something. It is movement in the right direction. To act is what allows for hope and the possibility of growing in compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. For me, inaction is what leads to cynicism and defeatism. I I feel like I was channeling Sister Nicole here because I was thinking about uh, and talking to Leslie Woods yesterday about what it is for us to do and what it means to come into the awareness of what is ours to do, to have the courage to sit still and ask for that divine guidance, to affirm you are divinely guided, but then to have the awakening to it, to have the awareness dawn within our consciousness, takes courage to take that next step. Without that, we are in inaction. We know what's ours to do, And not doing it is what breeds cynicism and defeatism or illness, personally speaking. I'm good for a migraine when I'm not doing what's mine to do. And that inaction is not being still or experiencing serenity. It's being closed down Mm -hmm. or shut down not proceeding when we know we're proceeding, or, or standing in the river and not, or just fighting against the flow. <laughs> Life is happening. Days begin and end. Life, there is a flow. There is a movement forward. Seasons are happening. And if you're in Texas, you're going to find out that there's weather, and then there's weather, and then there's weather. It's going to happen. (laughs) It's just going to happen. But there is a possibility that through all of this, and certainly from this global pandemic, that we will, as Sister Nicole says here, grow in compassion for ourselves and others. Grow in mercy. Mercy is, is living in non-judgment. It harkens back to our no-complaint bracelet, where we don't criticize or complain or judge. It's a good practice. And forgiveness. I need to forgive myself on a regular basis. And I certainly need to forgive others over and over. And I don't know about you, but when I forgive, I've done the good work now. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? I need to forgive again. And I need to forgive again. And this is not in action. This is taking the next step. It's making a decision. This is what's mine to do. And guess what? We don't get to choose what we're going to do for every day of our life. We only get to choose for right now. And then we get to choose again. And then we get to choose again. But what's happening for us is we're becoming stronger. Our consciousness is expanding. And it's from our expanded consciousness where we will resolve situations that are happening now that we have no idea what to do with. It's powerful practice. And Marianne Williamson, I love the wisdom of this unity minister, and she brings much to light. Love knows how to form itself. God will do his work if we do ours. Our job is to prepare ourselves for love. When we do, love finds us every time. I love this. I love that we can talk about all of this, of what's mine to do, and consciousness, and anxiety, and is it a blessing or is it not? But when it comes down to it, 
Love heals all things. Love renews all things. Love restores all things. Love is our quest. And when we're acting in love, and this is unconditional love. This is love that doesn't have strings attached to it. It's love for love's sake. Then this is how the universe works. God is loving life into creation in the form of ideas. And it's ours to love. And it's our responsibility to recognize that God is love and as a divine spark, divine Holy Spirit in action and as being that God presence in action, it is ours to do, to take care of ourselves, to um, lay the groundwork to be receptive to love. When I'm not taking care of myself, it's very difficult for me to love myself, and it is extra difficult for me to allow someone else to love me. So what I really love about this quote and and the wisdom that Marianne Williamson shares here is that it's our job to prepare ourselves for love. When we do... Love finds us. It meets us. We know what to do. We do it gracefully. We do it swiftly. And we find great joy in knowing it's ours to do, feeling good in the process of getting to that clarity, and feeling great in the process of being God in action. Yes. So we're going to take these thoughts into meditation And the Unity Singers are going to prepare the way for grounding us in that space where we're ready to hear, feel, and see with clarity what is for us to do next in love. As we settle into this time of meditation and breathe deeply, 
Let us open our minds and open our heart space. Breathing into the connection, this communion with God, open and willing to receive our divine idea. Asking, what is mine to do? Continue to breathe and open your heart space even wider. Breathe and open your mind even wider and recognize that you are a hollow reed. You are a conduit of spirit. Allowing the question to bubble up, asking, what is mine to do? Or what is mine to do next? We breathe in and hold a firm that we are filled with divine ideas right now. Asking what is mine to do and guiding that divine idea to speak to us in a way that we cannot misunderstand or show us in a way that we cannot possibly ignore. We affirm that we are filled with divine ideas right now. So I invite you to take a moment in the silence, holding that question and holding that affirmation. I am filled with divine ideas right now. We'll take that into the silence and see what it is that spirit has to be revealed for just you. As we breathe deeply in that connection, we breathe in gratitude. Thank you, God, for showing me. Thank you, God, for guiding me. Thank you for the truth that I am a divine light in this world, uniquely shining uniquely showing up just as you're able to. And though you may not have clarity in this moment, you have taken the time to breathe, to be still, to ask the question and affirm the truth. So I invite you to keep your eyes open to keep your ears open. Look for the face of God in our friends and our family and listen for the words of God as they speak truth to you. You never know where clarity will show up. I affirm that I am filled with divine ideas right now. As you keep that thought in mind, I invite you to start wiggling your toes or rolling your neck. And when you're ready, open your eyes and hold that truth. And join me in affirming, I know what is mine to do 
and I do it. And so it is. Beautiful. Step out on the water